Hey folks, how you doing? This is Shock, and um, I just had a debate with an atheist, and it's not often when you get like a knockout, uh, drop, dropout punch in a debate, but I did. I won the debate, and it was an epic win, so check this out. We're going to take this motorcycle on the freeway, and I have a camera. Let me show it to you. So now I'm going to put the camera in the visor. Very small camera it goes right below my nose in front of my mouth where I can talk. So check this out. And then we're going to be hands free, see? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about how I've been meeting atheists, Christians, people from all walks of life. Let me reset my fuel counter because I just got fuel. So I've been uh, having an open challenge. Hold on, let's go around. Let's uh, go out on the street real quick. And I'll tell you about how I was debating this atheist, and I had a knockout punch in the debate. He lost the debate, <clears throat> but most of the debates that I do. Here we go. All right, I got the green. Most of the debates I do, um, uh, so far I've won every debate. You can see if you want to see the debates that we do, you go right here below. See where that website is right below this video, www.shockonow.net, right? <clears throat> now, I've won every debate, not because uh, of my talent, but because there are better arguments that Christian theism is true than that atheism is true. And I point out the contradictions of atheism and whatnot. But, um, so most of the time I'll win the debate. And can I tell you something about the debates first, why I like them? And then I'm going to tell you how I scored a knockdown, a knockout punch against this atheist in a debate. Even atheists were saying, yeah, you know, you won that one <laughs> big time. Um. You know why I like debates is, look, I am under no illusion that by having a debate with an atheist, he's not all going to go ahead, he's not all of a sudden going to go ahead that second in that debate in front of everybody and bow down on his knees and open his arms up to the sky while rain comes down on his face like the Shawshank Redemption movie <laughs> saying, okay, I'm a Christian now. You know, I'm under no illusion. I'm not expecting them to do that right there in the debate. But So why do I like the debates? Well, I like the debates is not so much for the atheists, but for the onlookers that are watching. Because the onlookers are on the fence. Some are uh, agnostic, some are atheists that are realizing it's full of crap. Well, uh, uh, some are Christians that want to learn how to debate and want to see both sides of the argument. It's always good to challenge uh, ourselves. Steel sharpens steel. So um, what I love about the debates is this. Remember, in debate, you just have to win the debate. You don't have to prove 100% certain their side or your side. The way that you could tell a person has won the debate is which side has presented, here's the word, the more plausible argument. Let's pick up speed. Here we go. I got to get over here. This is my own little special lane here. Carpool motorcycle lane. So it's basically whoever has presented the more plausible argument. Even if you won like 51% um, to 49%, okay, and you're the 51%, you still won the debate. You created, you, you produced the more plausible argument. So let's talk about how this guy, Sean, he spelled it S-E-A-N, Jesus, I pulled right out in front of that guy right there. What's going on? Sean, uh, 
popped into my uh, chat room, debate room, right here below. And you guys are invited to come there and uh, debate me if you if you if you want to. No one's won the debate yet except me. So he comes in and he says, you could tell he's upset. He don't seem like he's very pleased with me as an atheist because I've shaken his world. I've turned it upside down. Because he says, you know that question shock? And he started talking about how he hates that question. You know the question that's titled, that I've asked, where I ask atheists to provide any type of proof and evidence, any argument why we should believe atheism is true. So he says, well, that doesn't make sense. The burden of proof is not on us and all this other stuff. And I, so I have this technique that I've been using. And if you're a Christian and you debate, I want to give you a little secret technique. And I used it in this debate and it worked flawlessly. Let's get over to the right. Well, too late. See, you want the atheist to, to stand up to the plate and give you arguments why atheism is correct and Christianity is not. But see, they don't have any real arguments. So what atheists do is they evade. They will be evasive. So this guy came in and he was I, he was all uh, <laughs> very upset that I've been asking atheists to provide proof and evidence that atheism is accurate and correct, or for that matter, even true. And we know the amazing atheist failed. Click below this video, you'll see the amazing atheist waving the white flag of surrender as he admits he can't prove, he cannot prove that atheism is true and accurate, thereby making it a lie, folks. The atheist experience show failed. They obsessively talked about unicorns, in a box and then the size of a unicorn, an invisible unicorn. It was just an utter fail. Click below here and you can see that video of the Atheist Experience Show failing. So, okay, let's pick up the speed we got. Here. So the guy comes in and I challenge him then to a debate. He goes, well, I don't like that question. Uh, and he says, that, you know, the burden of proof's not on us and I, so here's the, here's the technique that you use. I said, would you agree with me? First, I challenged the guy to a debate, okay? And he's like, yeah. So I, I asked him, I said, would you agree with me that both atheism and Christianity contradict each other? Everyone knows the answer is yes. They don't agree with each other. They contradict each other big time. The Bible and Christianity says atheists are fools. Psalm 14.1, a fool says within his heart there is no God. So obviously that contradicts atheism. There's all types of other stuff too that I, that I could bring up. So he agrees. He agrees that they both can't be true. They both can't be right. So then I asked him, here it is folks, which one is right? Which one is true? Which one's correct? Atheism or Christianity? At which point he knew I had him because now he has to give good arguments which he had none for why atheism is true um, and not Christianity like he claimed he claimed that Christianity is not true that atheism is true well then you're gonna have to give good arguments for that you see how I did that we tighten the news we get them to make their claim and then they got to back up their claim in the debate so here's where I get the knockout punch it was bada boom and he, he was down for the count now, by the way, when I tell these stories about how we totally destroyed atheism, this is not a personal attack on the atheist. This is a debate. So I, when I'm referring to the atheist being destroyed, I'm referring to his, his argument. So let's go through some things. On my uh, debate, you know how like he gets 20 minutes to talk and then I get 20 minutes. Well, he went over his time. So I even let him go over the time. I didn't even stop him, you know. He kept going 21 minutes, 22 minutes. That's fine. When I got up to bat, I went through the historicity of Jesus Christ, how the, how the majority of New Testament scholars, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, let's go straight so I can, I can just uh, not have to worry about changing freeways so I can keep talking to you. Let's look up to you. The majority of the New Testament scholars agree on the empty tomb, 
they agree on the eyewitness accounts, people that did say that they saw Jesus resurrected, and they agreed that uh, these people, this is historical, that they even died. Do you guys know that every one of the disciples ended up dying because they would not renounce Jesus Christ? The only one that did not end up dying is John, who we believe had written Revelation, which is the last pages of the Bible. And um, John, we needed to be alive to write Revelation. But every one of the disciples died for their belief. Even James, the brother of Jesus, said he witnessed Jesus Christ. He went on trial. He also was persecuted. So, okay, here's the part where I get the bada boom knockout punch against atheism. The guy says, on you know how you go back and forth, cross examination of debate? He says, yeah, well, it doesn't make sense why God would use Jesus Christ or the Bible, uh, you know, to get his message out there. In other words, the atheist was saying it doesn't make sense to him, makes rational sense to me, uh, why God would use Jesus Christ and the Bible to get his message out. And that's not the only thing God uses. He uses humble sinners saved by grace like me. He's using me right now. And I am willing to uh, help with the spread of the gospel. So anyways, I he said that it doesn't make sense, but then he gave no arguments why it didn't make sense. So most of his talking was just saying opinion. It was no proof or evidence. I even gave scientific evidence, the cosmological argument, the teleological argument for God, at which point he said there's thousands of constants that need to be fine-tuned, which was incorrect. There are some constants that don't need to be fine-tuned. There's about 50 constants that need to be explicitly fine-tuned. So I had to correct him on his error there. Um, at which I said, you know, you sure you want to go with that? Because that's an error. And then he, he got off that subject real quick because he knew he made a mistake. But here's his big, giant mistake where he blew it. Number one, not only did he not provide any arguments why we should believe atheism is true, and I even pointed that out to him. I said, you know, I disagree with everything you're saying, and I went through point by point why he's wrong on each point. I said, but let's just say that even if everything you said was true, it still doesn't make atheism true or correct. God could still exist. He said, well, why does God have to use the Bible and Jesus Christ? To spread his message. Well, even if that was true, that God could have used a different method or whatever, it still doesn't prove that God does not exist and atheism is true. But now the part where we were shocked how he messed up. I pressed him. I pressed him on the empty tomb because he did admit that the empty tomb is historical. He admit that uh, the women followers uh, found Jesus' tomb empty, and he also admitted that there were eyewitnesses that said they saw Jesus resurrected. Let's pick up speed over here. You follow me? He said all those things about Jesus' empty tomb, about Jesus' eyewitnesses. Then, he, when I pressed him on it, and I said, well, what do you think the appearances of Jesus were? What's your argument for it. Are you saying it was the hallucinations? Are you saying the disciples lied? In other words, he's agreeing that those things happened, that the disciples said they saw appearances. He's agreeing on the empty tomb of Jesus, that the women found the empty tomb. So what are you saying then? What, what, what happened? What's your theory on that? And this is where he blows it big time. He says, well, there's no evidence that Jesus was crucified <laughs> and then and there's actually extra biblical evidence not just in the Bible as you guys know there's extra biblical evidence of that but then he really blows it this is where I score the knockout punch and I totally take the debate I win it he says Jesus never existed at which point even the atheist said he was wrong at the end of the debate some of the atheists got on the mic and they said I won the debate and they said that, yeah, it didn't make sense what he was saying. Are you an atheist that is willing to debate? Go right below here, shockandout.net, and get in the arena. I'll see you there. God bless.